to order the public hearing. This is the hearing in accordance with uh, grant conditions. Uh, for restructuring the Clara Martin Center on 28 South Main. Yeah. Is this the, is this the closeout hearing? It is. Ready to just say this is what we did? Sure. Anybody got any comments? Okay. Sure. I'm Allison Friedkin. I'm with Downstreet Housing and Community Development. Mm -hmm. Christy Everett, Clara Martin Center. So, um, Yes, the project is done. It's actually been done mm -hmm. since uh, we were just discussing October 1st, and uh, four units, four are, units are um, completely full, at least up at this point. So everything seems to be going well so far. We um, had all of our uh, monitoring visits from, or not all of, we had our monitoring visit from the state agency, and we've had uh, periodic progress reports. We have one more progress report due um, the end of this month, um, and that will be our final report to them, a we'll close out report. Um, so any questions about the project or anything regarding close out? Looks good. Thank you. Thank you. Just a comment that I went through the building that was at the opening, and I was very impressed with the building. Oh, thank you very much. I'm sure, the, what you do there will be just as good. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, we were thrilled to work with the Claire Martin Center, and uh, you know, on behalf of the whole team, the contractor and the architect, it was a it was a great project. And uh, happy yeah, to I ask a question. I think I saw someplace that it mentioned um, shelter for homeless. Do, do you have in that house a facility that put somebody that was homeless could find a place to stay? Our incubation program that's next door uh, actually helps folks who are homeless. Uh, okay. Residents who were to move into the project at 28 South Main, they can be homeless before they move in there, and we would help support them in getting settled, getting services in place for them. Thank you. 28 South Main is considered uh, permanent supportive housing, so um, versus safe haven is right. it's transitional. designated transitional. So. Any more questions or comments about the project? Seeing none. I just again want to thank the, the town for you know allowing us to apply for the money. Um, it is you know officially <laughs> officially you folks, and um, we we are grateful for the support, especially Adolfo's support, in, you know from application on through to all of our various reports and monitoring <laughs> visits and all that good stuff. And uh, having a good uh, project under our belt with the agency is always good for the next time. So <coughs> we really appreciate that. And for the comments, we'll close the public hearing and call to order the regular select board meeting. Thank you. Thank you. First up is public comment. Is there anything not on the agenda? We, we would like to go together. I'm Sally Penran, and we're and Robin Goodall. We're from Kimball. Um, I wanted to bring you up to date, to date on what we have been doing with our priorities. And in Amy's wonderful words, our overreaching strategic priorities the next two years. Based on the data that was collected around the town a couple of years ago, the ongoing surveys and meetings and stuff that we've conducted on our own, we've come up with the three priorities being youth engagement, programming, and how to best use the building that we have to support both of those goals. So to structure our going forward with that, we're setting up three task forces, each one with staff, trustees, and hopefully members of the community, because we need that input as well, to go forward on all three areas concurrently. This budget that we are going to present also reflects that with staffing and with support of youth activities. That's what I have to say. And when we built our budget, when we went through and built our budget, um, we finished, we finalized what we thought was our going to be at the budget that we would submit to the town in October. Um, and I understand from Amy that a, there was some information shared at the department meeting that um, we would like to, we're, we're going to take our budget back and go over it again and amend our ask um, to the town. And so you're going to get a copy of the budget before we have our next meeting. And so we would like to, you know, respectfully ask that you let us finish our process and we will get Adolfo a finalized budget after our meeting on the 19th. Okay. Questions? Any questions? Okay. 
things. It was, uh, it was an amazing thing. I have to say it was an amazing thing to go through all of the information, all of the, all of the things that people said that they wanted the town to be and how they wanted and to look at that and see how the library could fit into all of that vision, you know, as, as, the, as the town changes its personality a bit. It was quite a process. It was. It was a lot of fun. I don't think it's over. No, no. <laughs> Absolutely not. Never over. Never, Never over. over. Great. Any other public comment? Oh, not on the agenda. Yes, I also suggested that I do something. Just that um, uh, we'll connect with Heidi. That we weren't sure. We have some light, commercial white lights that we use for our illuminated forest festival that we would like to string on some of the trees downtown to add to the existing illumination there. Um, but I had never done that before, so I'm not sure, you know could have coordinated if there was a permit involved or whatever, but if it's simply working with Heidi at the rec department, we can certainly do that. And that's all you have to do. Yeah. 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 Both groups, we just we wanted to make sure that the board was aware of yeah. And then just mm -hmm. randomly see new lights popping up. Yeah. More lights, the better. Yeah. The lights are gorgeous. It looks great. Yeah. It looks beautiful. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. really it's good. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Any other public comments? Amen. If I may ask the board to consider two changes. Um, one change is uh, something that uh, Julie and I have been talking about and I uh, completely forgot to bring it to the attention of the board is part of the ongoing conversation with the downtown Wi-Fi. Um, RACDC has compiled some information. They have visited some of the locations and worked with department directors to visit some locations. And, They'd ask to share some information with the board about uh, costs to the town as well as the equipment that would, would potentially be installed if the board and authorize the, the agreement. And if, we, if the board were to entertain that, it would be under uh, new business. And the other item is to, to add uh, working communities uh, grant under grants, and this is a uh, part of the working communities program that Josh is coordinating with several other towns. Okay, motion to approve the consent calendar with changes. The agenda. The agenda. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> agenda. Okay. Motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> Opposed? Abstained? Carries. Consent calendar. We have meeting minutes and warrants. Now I'll make a motion to do that. <laughs> I'll second that one. A motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Carries. New business auditor presentation. Before we move into this, there was a, a um, when the uh, draft audit came out, and then we got the final, I guess it's the final at this point. Um, there was a comment about the auditors presenting it to us without Cliff. And adult program. I'm not sure I see the benefit of that. And the reason I, yeah, but the reason I say that is because, as you know, we didn't get this presentation in the past, and I think there's going to be there's potentially some back and forth there that I think you would benefit from the questions or what we have for comments. The, the idea behind that for the benefit of the board is that it gives the auditor a venue to speak freely without management present um, to um, in any way influence what they're saying and so that the board can get a clear picture of what went on during the audit and any discoveries they might have made and that, that's why um, we would be, it's a best practice and generally accepted in the public world and we're perfectly comfortable with not being in the room perfectly comfortable with being in the room if the board wants us here. I'm perfectly fine with you being in the room. And if the auditors have anything to say that they're not comfortable with. You're fine um, too. I'm okay too. Okay. <laughs> I guess everybody's okay. 
the, the, the meat of it is all in uh, as a written document anyway, right? And we're not going to hear anything that's that would be like, if, if it was at all negative or concerning, I mean, it would all already be in the written document, wouldn't it? We would hope so. <laughs> well, sometimes we as auditors ask you for, for information uh, in meetings like that, uh, and uh, uh, occasionally we do have them in a, uh, uh, in a uh, board and auditors only, but usually it's, it's after we've had a, you know, a general session with management, the auditors, and the board. And we did bring some final reports. Uh, uh, along for distribution, which uh, probably are pretty similar to what uh, the draft looked like. So you'll tell us anything in the open meeting that you would otherwise, right? Uh, I certainly will. Of course, uh, our audit manager, Bonnie, she may spill the beans. I don't know. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think it's uh, perfectly fine for us. The request now. wasn't to go into an executive session or anything. No, I just, it's Typical practice. In some forms and others, it's not. So. All right, you're on. We're on. Uh, let me uh, let me bring these over. I will. Would you like to open that for me? I think we put that uh, just like Christmas. Yes, Christmas in December. Oh wait, it is December. <laughs> yeah. And uh, oh, I have uh, I have that revised invoice. That, <laughs> and uh, can we just pull up here so we're close to you? Is this a good place? Thank you. Thanks, you don't have to do it. We, we, like, we, we, have, we won't hurt you. Okay, I thought maybe Cliff would want to come up too. Oh, well, he's yeah. welcome to it. Sure. Just for, for the sake of the minutes, could you please state your name, uh, your full names? We will do that. Uh, I'm John Mudgett, the uh, uh, lead auditor or the partner in charge of the Randolph audits um, for Mudgett, Jeanette, and Crow Listeners, the firm that prepared the audit report and performed the audit. Uh, I'd like to introduce Bonnie Massage. Uh, Bonnie's been the uh, audit manager on your project for several years, and uh, she's had 16 years of experience auditing governments, and she's pretty doggone good at it, so I try to stay out of her way for the most part, but I do take the opportunity to come along to meetings like this and because I do like to express my appreciation of boards that have us here, and, that, uh, and also to say that uh, uh, we're pretty serious about uh, opening it up to any questions or comments. It works best as kind of a roundtable discussion. We're not necessarily here to read the report to you, uh, although uh, we can certainly comment on any section reports or financials. And if we don't know the answer, Cliff does. One would hope. <laughs> there you go. So for the record, though, before we get this started and for the benefit of everybody, this audit includes the, the first portion of the year, which was under my and was not under Cliff, and then all the work that Cliff has done to clean things up and go forward. So I don't want anybody to just think it's all this work, although the last part and the better part has been, shall we say it that way? Is that PC? <laughs> <laughs> well, that depends on what the report says, right? I've read it. <laughs> it's actually, it's actually, uh, I, I would, I'm going to let Bonnie do most of the talking because she did most of the auditing. <coughs> but really, um, the report itself uh, consists of auditors' reports in the front on the financial statements and two auditors' reports in the back relating to internal control and compliance in connection with the audit, and the second one relating to internal control and compliance relating to the federal funds that the town uh, received and expended. So, uh, all three reports are, if I might characterize them this way, they were pretty good reports. Uh, there, was no, there were no modifications to the report on the financial statements. In other words, it's what we would call a clean report. It says that the financial statements as presented do fairly present financial position and operations of the town of Randolph and its different funds and 
groupings that we call opinion units. Uh, the ones in the back are pretty good at uh, uh, reporting that there were no uh, what we call material weaknesses, internal control, really deficiencies in control, control that were either large or not so large or even small. There were basically no, no uh, uh, reported findings this year. Uh, Bonnie uh, did test the uh, uh, performance of the town with respect to last year's findings and she can tell you uh, about that. Uh, and we appreciate the fact that management took some steps to make those uh, 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 go away this year. In other words, uh, they took corrective actions, and uh, that's good. Uh, Bonnie, what would you like to tell them? Spill the beans, um, kid. Well, as I mentioned already, um, since Cliff started working with the town, um, he's implemented a lot of changes. and change things structurally in the software used to account for everything, um, as well as some of the controls to monitor everything that's processed through the town. Um, the two findings we had last year related to balance sheet reconciliations, long-term debt, and in addition to long-term debt capital leases, um, things that weren't always ready for us when we came to do the audit. Um, those two findings have gone away. This year Cliff did a pretty good job in making sure those areas were reconciled and reported correctly before we arrived. Um, we only had five adjustments um, compared to 25 last year. Um, so pretty significant improvement and the adjustments that we did have this year were not that significant. Um, so definitely it was a, a very big step in the right direction. Um, things went a lot smoother as far as field work. Um, anything we asked for was provided right away. Um, the one thing that has changed since FY19 ended, which our audit is on FY19. Since then, um, one of Cliff's staff has retired. Um, so there may be some more changes to come in FY20 and you know how that's handled. Um, so we'll test controls again next year or find out what's implemented, whether that position is filled or not. But I would expect things to continue to go in the same direction that they are going now. Did, uh, now, I know that this is the first time that we have come to see you in a few years, and uh, it's my understanding that you've had an opportunity to read reports in prior years and, and have seen the results of audit work done in those years. Uh, but uh, uh, if there is, uh, I know there was some reference to fewer adjusting entries and, and cleaning up of findings. Uh, I don't want that to necessarily indicate that uh, audits were particularly difficult in prior years, but certainly we appreciate uh, close attention to to the department and to the uh, to the to the requirements of the auditors as we come in the door. Thank you. Uh, and if you did have questions relating to prior audits, you could also of us on that. Uh, both of us have been associated with for several years now, and uh, so we have a little bit of a historical perspective. I would, uh, I guess, uh, say once again that if while we're here at the end of the year auditing financial statements, and we're uh, sometimes communicating with management down here during the year, we're equally as willing to hear from the board or get contacted by the board if uh, there are concerns or items that we should be aware of. We like to, all, all, auditors always like to uh, know what they should 
No, as they're doing planning for future audits. And if it's necessary to come in during the year, we're real happy to do that too. Uh, the way we conduct audits now usually is a two-stage process with some planning and preliminary activity in the spring of the year, oftentimes prior to, to your June 30 year end, and then trying to have a block of time to come back and do it in one block after the end, once the uh, books uh, are closed and things are ready for audit. We always send lists of things that we're going to need to see, uh, uh, in addition to other things that may come up, of course, during the audit. Anyway, that's pretty much where we're at. Uh, the financial statements themselves, you've had a chance to look at, I think. Any questions or comments, concerns, notes in the margin? Want me to move it along? <laughs> okay. Didn't have any on the financial statements, but okay. one curiosity question I have for you is when you do your evaluation on the federal funds piece, what do you use for criteria for a low risk oddity? In order to be low risk, you have to have had a single audit performed in the past two years. Uh, last year, you guys did not have a single audit, so that automatically disqualified you from being low risk. Um, Probably five or six years ago, you were having single audits almost every year. You had a lot of grant funding going through, mm -hmm. and you met the threshold pretty much every year, and we were doing single audits almost every year. At that point, I believe you were low risk. Last year, probably about three years ago, the threshold for needing a single audit was increased to $750,000. So last year, you dropped down below that threshold, and a single audit wasn't required. Because it wasn't done last year, we can't rely on that, so automatically become high risk again this year. Well, not high risk, but not low risk. <laughs> You'd like to have one done every year, wouldn't you? No. <laughs> <laughs> but that's an indication you've got uh, plenty of money coming in from, uh, and from upstream. Even though one wasn't done last year, the audit procedures that we do on the financial statements included the grant funds as well. Right. So we did still look at them and do some substantive testing on the grant programs. As a matter of fact, one of the things we always have to test is what is that schedule of expenditures of federal awards? Was there sufficient to trigger it? Because uh, it's not always uh, easy for uh, clients to determine that. Uh, some of the uh, Grant programs are easier to determine whether they're uh, pass-through funds or uh, pass-through federal funds coming through the state, or, or uh, others it's not so easy, and sometimes uh, they get confused as to just what to put on that schedule. Do you remember how much we had for federal funds this year? Yeah. This year? And this year it would be in your uh, financial statement package. Uh, because back uh, at there was uh, a chart in there, just over mm -hmm. one point eight million. Yeah, I haven't seen it before. Then. Yeah, mm -hmm. a million, a million eight eighty five, four twenty nine. That's way toward the back of this package. It's part of the supplementary Six. stuff, yeah. <laughs> along with the reports on the federal funds. And most of that, of course, did relate to the uh, community development block grants. Which were, which of course passed through, but then again were principally passed through by the town. But you, of course, retain responsibility. So that became what we call the major program. But when we're testing federal funds, we not only risk is assessed, but uh, uh, determining what are the major programs that require more in-depth testing, and then. Uh, specific procedures relating to compliance or controls over those programs. You had a chance to review what was done in the organizing Yeah. What are your comments? For the most part, I think um, going forward, it will make things a lot easier from his perspective to be able to report back to you guys more timely. Um, 
your chart of accounts has gone through changes similar to what Cliff has done. I think this is the third time I can remember since I started doing the audit. So it was very cumbersome to look at your chart of accounts because there's a lot of accounts in it that are no longer used. Um, it got pretty big and out of control. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that was pretty overwhelming for somebody new coming in wondering what was going on. Um, so I think it definitely will simplify things going forward and be in a format that he can generate information to you yeah. much more reasonably. Should probably help you too in the process. Yeah, um, once I figured out the new system that he had going on, mm -hmm. um, everything was pretty straightforward. Um, you guys have a lot of funds. <laughs> um, and certain funds are com from your, when he runs reports by fund, some of those funds are combined to reflect one column as a fund in your report. Mm -hmm. um, but it's fairly simple to combine them to get from the single fund structure to the fund structure that's reported in the financial statements. Now you're not uh, thinking of any new funds though, right? <laughs> When I reviewed, I did make the comment to Bonnie, Wait, these folks have too many funds. And she said, no, they don't. As a matter of fact, Cliff knows exactly how many funds he wants, and he added a few this year. Or he added more, what I would call some funds is what probably more to the point to, uh, to uh, keep better control over uh, uh, some capital projects and that kind of thing. Good. Any questions? Sounds good. Okay. All positive. Great. Thank you. Well, once again, thanks for inviting us. We like uh, coming and seeing you all and appreciate the fact that you uh, read these and, uh, and uh, take them seriously. It's good practice. Thank you. Thanks, Cliff. Thank you. Shiny on top of Queen next year. Shiny on top of Queen next year. Always got to have room for improvement, right? And for education, the audit report has been posted to the town's website and it's available publicly. Great. For anybody that wants it. It's out to the press, huh? Yeah, you just send it to him? You send it to our little guy? You should have emailed him to him. <laughs> okay. Just in case. All right, next up is Highway Department Equipment. Um, as the board would see in the tax sheet item sheet, um, the town has been working with the Highway Department to ensure that uh, we could potentially replace two existing uh, trucks, one a six-wheel dump truck and the other a ten-wheel tandem that have been a uh, financial drain to the to the department. Um, it, it's cost the town a considerable amount in maintenance over the last several years, including an accelerated maintenance uh, cost over the last two years. Um, the request is not necessarily to replace the two trucks with two similarly sized trucks but instead to upgrade one of the trucks from a six-wheeler to a ten-wheeler for a variety of reasons, two of them being that uh, the increased load capacity uh, from a six-wheel dump truck to a ten-wheel tandem essentially doubles the load. So as trucks are, are being used to shuttle aggregate uh, sand, salt, everything else that we would need, it's taking fewer trips, reducing the amount of fuel that we use, reducing the amount of staff time. And as the trucks are circulating through town, sanding during the winter time, the double load capacity is also very helpful because it cuts down the amount of time used to sand an entire route from four hours with a six wheeler to two hours with a, uh, a 10 wheel. Uh, so there's savings in staff time, there's savings in fuel, but we brought our highway superintendent today so that he can speak specifically to the need for one, the replacing of the two trucks, but also the potential upgrade from one six wheeler to a 10 wheeler. How many trucks are in the fleet total? We have, Bill, correct me if I'm wrong, we have a total of six, six trucks. Uh, I believe four of them are 10 wheelers, uh, <coughs> four six wheelers and um, two 10 wheelers. 
I'm ready for the highway department. Let's <laughs> <laughs> get you a CDL and I'll yeah, be here, right. right? You can substitute. He's going to cover for a while anyway. Mm. <laughs> so this will put us to a 3-3? Three, three. Yeah. 3-3. Three mm -hmm. and three. This will move it to 3-3. 3-6, 3-10. How old are these trucks that need to replace? Uh, I believe, correct me again, the first one is a 2009, mm -hmm. I think that's a six wheel. No, that's the 10 wheel. Mm -hmm. And the two th uh, 10 wheeler is? Six wheeler is a 2011. 2011. So eight and 10 years. Eight and 10 years of being beat up. Um, the sand corrodes uh, the, the beds of the truck. Um, they've been really put through a lot. And the trucks themselves, I think, we may have, I think they were just inferior trucks, I think. And it was an issue that wasn't addressed when we first purchased them. And uh, they just have cost us a lot. And they shouldn't have cost us this much. I, I, I wasn't there when it was purchased. It was a different different crew here, different crew there. And um, I, we now believe that we could have sent one of the trucks back because it wasn't necessarily built to the specs that we had specified, but we accepted it and we've been paying the price ever since. When we look at the service that we need to provide throughout the town, mm -hmm. changing one more truck to a 10 wheeler, does that reduce the service we can provide on some of these roads? No. We're going to take, we're going to add a 10 wheeler into, into the center. <clears throat> more candles uh, a lot of area here. The six wheel that's up there is going to come down here in the village, which is easier to maneuver in the village here. So, you know, setting that down which is involved here, definitely more efficient. Um, so, the longer runs out South Randolph Road, Davis Road, Clay White Road, we'll give you a larger truck. And not have to return to the center garage so often. Questions? Comments? Motions? I do have one question. Were th when were these scheduled to be replaced, the Dolphin, in the Catholic room? Oh, roughly about a year ago. Uh, the issue was first brought up with Bill's predecessor. Uh, his predecessor was asked to create spec sheets for, for the vehicles, and then in that transition, the spec sheets were lost. They had been since located. Uh, Bill used similar spec sheets, confirmed that the spec sheets were exactly what we needed. Uh, and so when we circled back to having the conversation again was when we first brought the issue to the select board uh, roughly about three or four months ago. And that's when we started essentially really digging into the, the costs uh, of the truck to the town on maintenance and the need for not just the two trucks, but potentially the upgrade to the, the 10 wheeler. Uh, so the conversations have been ongoing for at least over a year since, since Bill joined the highway crew. Well, in my understanding, it might have been better if we'd stuck to the original schedule. We wouldn't have had as many breakdowns. Uh, we could have replaced the trucks sooner. At least one of the trucks had been discussed. It wasn't necessarily two at the time, it was one. Um, but unfortunately, it's one of those issues that happens when you have shaft transition. Things that were a priority for a person necessarily, don't, uh, not that they don't move on to the next person, but in the transition, things end up being lost. And it took some time to figure out again that this was a priority that we needed to, to deal with. So. It was just bad timing at the time of the transition and superintendents. I, I don't, I, I think the issue that we've had with the trucks um, isn't necessarily uh, pinned to the extra year that we've had them. These issues have been existed for both trucks for many, many years. Uh, and although the, the most recent issues for maintenance are pinned over the last year, um, you know, previous years, it, 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 they've just been a problem. And we do have funding secured within the capital budget for the Highway Equipment Reserve Fund. Um, at least the, the anticipated annual payments for two trucks 
going forward have been built into the, the capital budget or the capital plan. So these were in last year's capital plan to be replaced with the first payment being due in two, in twenty one. Which would time with purchasing them right yeah. about now. One of the things we will do is if the board approves the purchases we're going to ensure that the specs that are sent out through the RFP process are the ones that are built into the trucks, but they're also not necessarily go with the traditional vendors. We're also going to reach out to truck manufacturers in Canada. We know that there is a manufacturer in Canada that builds um, fire apparatus or fire trucks. I intend to call them and say, if we send you specs, how much would it cost to build us a truck from scratch? Um, so it's another option. It could so, potentially be a cheaper option. These these kinds of trucks aren't common enough that they're just like, off, like essentially off the shelf kind of items that you can just say, not really. I want I want one of those. You think there's they make them by the thousands? No, it's not like a car dealer. Uh -huh. These trucks have to be prepared and built to hold the plow rig, hold the weight, um, hydraulic pump on the front, and they extend the bumpers. They need, the hood has to be designed to check the oil with the, with the plow frame on it. So there's all kinds of difference, differences between a, a plow truck and yeah. <coughs> excuse me, a regular tandem or six wheel. Yeah. It, just, it just seems like it would be the kind of item that is, you know, municipalities all over the North America use them, right? And that they would be standard models that you can just say. There are standard yeah. models, that's just the, the equipment that we have. You know, we try to standardize as much of the equipment as possible. We want to make the, the plow blades that we have interchangeable so they fit on every truck. The challenge is that municipalities don't buy their blades from every place. Sometimes they're, if they're off by a millimeter or an inch, uh, that means that the truck itself has to be modified so that it fits the type of blade that we have. And we could potentially modify the, the, the wench that carries the blade itself by you know, doing some work internally, but if that internal work damages the body of the frame itself, then the manufacturer can say, well, you did something you weren't supposed to, warranty voided. So, unfortunately, when you have manufacturers that deal with governments, it's always more expensive, I think. You know, we, we found that when manufacturers deal with governments, they think deep pockets is most costly, you know, endless supply of money, and so some of these trucks aren't always cheap, and they do have to be modified to fit whatever the town specifically have. So. Okay. Now, we, we can go on a lot and buy a dump truck, but it won't be it won't be equipped to handle blades. It won't be equipped to handle distribution of salt, and all that stuff is a modification. Okay. It takes heavier front axles. It's a lot of, it takes heavier front axles. There's a lot of stuff to it. It's not like the traditional guy who's running a dump truck. Never, normally, he's never going to buy a plow unless he's got a contract with somebody, and then he would buy a, tra a plow truck that was comparable to what he would need to do that. So some states I mean, subcontract out their services. And so for us, it's been one of the things that you've always got to do is you've got to get a dump truck spec'd out to what you're doing. And once you lock yourself into a certain manufacturer of blades and stuff, if you want to make them compatible, that's what you got to buy. So it's kind of a... Like Adolfo said, you're kind of caught in a catch-22 here. Can't, we can't buy ours off a lot either. Mm -hmm. And yet all the New England states run the same truck. It's crazy. Okay. But you would think you could. Okay. I'm not crazy. No, mm -hmm. but you would think you could. Yeah, yeah. could do it. The number of them that are out there, mm -hmm. that they would this is kind of the, the fire assembly cars. line and it would be cheaper. Right. That was my thought. It would make sense, though. <laughs> okay. All right. Yep. You identify yourself. Um, sure. Joe Karen. Question: Are there any um, combines or organizations among towns in Vermont that get together and say, "Hey, why don't we say we'll all buy this truck or I'll buy that truck and get a price pick from the manufacturer for that reason?" Or does everyone just go solo against the big truck company and pay whatever they ask? The state does have a system, Trini, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I, do, I do know that the state has a, an office dedicated to doing exactly this, where 
municipalities can go and um, say, okay, we know we're going to purchase salt and sand during the winter time. They would negotiate a bulk price, which municipalities can sometimes participate in. Um, in certain cases, it is cheaper. In that case, our highway superintendent and previous highway superintendents have been able to find salt and sand cheaper than that bulk rate cost. Mm -hmm. um, but to your specific point, the state, from my understanding, does have that service where we can call and say, this is what we're looking to do. Do you have an option? Um, they could potentially find a truck, but again, the issue is in the modifications and in the cost of, you know, what are we looking to put on it? What type of specifications, what type of blades do we have? And What's the cost of blades as opposed to the cost of trucks? I mean, are blades at the cost of the trucks? Uh, the truck is dressed, is what they call it. Yeah. And the body and all that stuff. Is 60, like, roughly 60,000. Yeah. And what's the cost of the truck itself? About 120. So it's 50% cut off. Thank you. So what, what, how, um, how do the age of these trucks compare to the ones that are existing remaining in the fleet? I'm sorry? How does the ages of these trucks that we're looking to replace, how does that compare to the other trucks in the fleet? Are they newer trucks, the other ones? Uh, the, the trucks that we're looking to replace, well, the 2011 was, for example, built up the lot, bought up the lot. So it wasn't really built to be a power truck. So. That's why we're having so many breakdowns and frames breaking and bodies breaking. You know, it wasn't really designed for a plow truck. Okay. And the other one is just so rotted out. It's, it's a 12 yard body, it's not a 14 yard body. So um, that truck was not built properly either. They put a 12 yard body in the back of a, a tandem truck that was designed to be a box truck. So you put that body on there, put material in it and it picks the front of the truck off the ground so you can't steer it. So we have to chain up the front of the truck. So again, that wasn't properly built um, from whoever the supervisor was back then. Um, so the truck is really not not safe. So a lot of the problems these trucks are having is because they were really not suitable to begin right. with. And so they we might ordinarily have expected a longer lifespan, but because of initial problems that it's really cut into their lifespan. Yes. Okay. The others are 14s, 15s, and 17s. Right. It's the oldest ones on the plate. These are the older two. So, oh, so, and these are the oldest ones. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Add that we are also expecting to uh, use the two existing trucks as trade-ins, which would bring down the anticipated cost of the vehicles. Um, I believe, Bill, correct me if I'm wrong, it's roughly about $15,000 value trade-in for the 10-wheel tandem, mm -hmm. uh, and roughly about a $10,000 trade-in value for the six-wheel dump truck. Um, one of the things that we do, it's expect to include in the process is that any manufacturer that the town may choose to build the new trucks agree that we won't return or trade in the trucks that we have now until the two new trucks come in so this way we won't be short two trucks um, that's something that we learned recently while speaking with other people that have gone through this process it might be worth trying to sell them outright also aftermarket yeah maybe more more revenue Question: um, <clears throat> Are you just purchasing the trucks, not the plows? Since you said that all the plows are interchangeable from one truck to the other, would we keep the current plows? No. No. So everything would be replaced. Have you seen them? Mm -hmm. <laughs> have you seen them? <laughs> no, I they haven't. They have much more life in them than the trucks <laughs> at this point. Better off going with the trucks. And so um, the, rec the, recommend the recommended action here is uh, includes a particular purchase price for these trucks, but it sounds like we probably don't know exactly what. 
is structured in these. No, so. those are just based on estimates that we've received. Uh, it could be higher, it could be lower, uh, but that's been the standard, roughly the standard price for a truck built with the specs that we're looking for. Usually they come back, you get permission to bid them, mm -hmm. come in with what you want, and then it comes back to the board for the actual selection. Yeah. Sure, Trini's correct. So we, uh, we wouldn't, I wouldn't be saying, okay, I received the three, I'm taking this one. It's we bring whatever we've received by a certain date, bring it to the board, and we would provide a recommendation, but it would be up to the board to say, we like the blue truck by the blue one instead of the green. Uh -huh. yeah. That's what the final decision is. Yeah, yeah, based on right. color, right? <laughs> Isn't it always like that? Isn't that the most important thing? <laughs> I think you got the green and red is all the other trucks are green. That's true. Yeah. Match. Not necessarily. <laughs> you at least want them to I want to change color that. coordinated. <laughs> and we can identify which ones are the new trucks. We want a red with the Christmas colors. <laughs> Good point. Yeah, I don't want to decorate them next year for um, the parade. <laughs> You get LED lights installed on the outline of the truck for the free. Uh, by the have the manufacturer do that? Yeah. Don't we have a, in, uh, a company in town that does that kind of thing? Yeah, we're yeah, going to We could get him in there. We put it into get the specs. In I think I've got to coordinate with them. To, 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 you got to be Christmas parade <laughs> trucks, too, right? The spec is getting out of control if we're okay. going to this. All right. So we're looking for approval to bid these. Yes, please. And bring it back. Yes. Okay, I'll make the motion to approve the um, process to bid for two new trucks for the town. Two, two ten wheel trucks? Two ten wheel trucks, yes. I'll second. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is reviewing the road reclassification um, for Blue Goose Drive and Clay White Road. We took action back in January on these and one of the pieces that was needed was an agreement uh, on these two properties to allow us to have access onto the portion of property that the town did not own for the turnaround. And I'll let Adolfo fill us in on the efforts to try to get those in place. So over, uh, over the last year since the board issued its decision uh, and authorized me to work with the uh, two specific property owners, uh, one on Blue Goose Drive and the second on Clay White uh, Road, um, we have worked and engaged with the, the property owners. We've had our highway superintendent to visit both locations and work out appropriate turnaround locations for, for our trucks. Um, we've had our attorney review the decision rendered by the select board and then also information uh, collected through uh, just the, the hearing process. And our attorney drafted two agreements to potentially be offered to the, the, the residents and asked to be signed so that we could comply with the decision made by the select board. Um, at this point, we have not received uh, signed signatures or signed agreements by, by the residents. Um, we have had some requests for changes in the process. We've had uh, requests in general about the agreement. Um, so at this point, we thought it would be a, an appropriate time to bring the issue back to the select board regarding these agreements and ask for additional guidance. I believe we have one of the residents here, TJ Riley, who lives on Blue Goose uh, Drive. Conversations with uh, Tim Angel, they're planning to sign okay. and are waiting for their legal review. Um, so I'm not sure that that one is, is an issue. No. So when we had the discussion about these roads, the decision to keep both the Blue Goose in particular, to keep them as a public road was the fact that there was uh, a hydrant on the road that was there for fire protection of that area, and the chief in particular was interested in keeping that because there was no other water source up there. They would have to go down to 14 to get access to water. 
and then when the town, uh, when that hydrant was installed, we went through the dry hydrant program to get the funding for a portion of it. Uh, and part of that, the town has to agree to maintain the hydrant and whatnot. And so then the one line or the one pager that was signed at the time uh, was for the town to maintain the road at least to the hydrant. And then the, that's where it gets, it's left. The, the challenge I have with this is we still don't have that legal access to go beyond what we do because the road goes beyond for a segment. What we don't have access to is the land where we all agreed we would do some, bring some fill in and make the pad that the trucks could then pull forward and turn around on and go back. And that's what the the intent of the agreement was for. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. So, you want to come I can so we can probably clarify some things. Yeah, TJ yeah. Riley. Um, so, when this whole thing first came about, there was apparently some safety concerns that were uh, coming up. Um, I do know that when we had the, the site visit with, with you all, I think we all agreed that there was hard to see any immediate safety concerns. Um, and then I know it, it came to this issue of not having, you know, the, wanting the liability of turning around on private property. Um, to, to your point about the agreement, I, I can tell you that the spirit of the agreement at the time it was written was uh, to uh, cover the, the, the road in its entire length, and, and that's expressly for a couple of purposes. Uh, one, in, 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 I mean, this, there was, I have hundreds of emails about this full design process of getting the grant money, and, you know, it was initially a $15,000 project that my wife and I funded, and then did get reimbursed for 75%. So a lot of thought went into this, and it was actually discussed um, the importance of having the turnaround up towards the end of the road because at the hydrant itself, one, it's, it's very wet there. And in order to, to you'd have to, we'd have to build it up so much that it would be A, it would increase the static level f uh, uh, to, to the rise of the pond. And as you know from dry hydrants, it's sucking through a giant straw. The higher it is, the harder it is to get that initial draw. Um, so that was one reason. The other is that there's a, a ravine across the road and it would be inherently safe having uh, a turnaround that would have to be essentially sloped down to the road towards that ravine. Uh, and then of course, lastly, if, if vehicles were expected to back out into Silway Road, anybody who knows Silway Road at that point, that's not, that would not be a safe place to be having your drivers back into. So uh, I recognize that there may be some ambiguity in that uh, document, um, but I'm sure that myself, and I know I've spoken to Troy Dare, who is a part of the process, and probably Mel would all articulate the same thing, that the spirit of that agreement at the time was not to have it stop right at the dry hydrant. To the point about uh, not having uh, a turnaround within the town right of way, I've, I've worked closely with Adolfo, and um, you know, look, look, I had many problems with this proposed agreement. Uh, one was that it essentially stipulates that the only value to Blue Goose Drive, or Town Highway 63, is the dry hydrant. And I know that was, that was a discussion that came up during the whole road discontinuation process. Um, I was never one that said the only value to that road was having the dry hydrant. Uh, I had a letter from David Scheffler, who, uh, a longtime resident who developed the uh, four dwelling development off of Lapping Waters Way, uh, which is across from Braley Bridge. And it's actually stated in my conservation easement through the Vermont Land Trust. Uh, permission for vehicles that can't fit through Braley Bridge to transit my farm property to get to those dwellings if, if vehicles, emergency vehicles, utility vehicles can't th fit through um, that the Braley Bridge. Other property? That's not to come from your farm up on top? That's to come from the farm up top. There's a drive that was installed when uh, Mr. Scheffler did the development from my, from my farm uh, down uh, into that development because, and again, it was it was uh, 
uh, recorded in the conservation easement because of that importance. So that's, that's one point. The second point and is that there are the main utility lines that run from Route 66 all the way up Sillery Road, come up across the river down by Danish Sugar Shack, up the hill, and basically across the, the end of Blue Goose Drive, and then up through my pasture. And that provides all the service to most of the dwelling, the residences along Silway Road until I think there's a line that comes up Boudreau. Boudreau. Um, so, in fact, we had a crew there for three days this summer clearing trees when we had a windstorm that blew through because that's the only access they have down that entire line. So, my point is, my problem with that agreement was that it was far more than just saying, yes, you have permission to turn rounds in this location. But to that point, after my last meeting with Adolfo, I said, well, let's think about this. So Bill came up, and we measured out three rods, the town right-of-way, and it's nice and level and flat at the end of my road, and we staked it out together. I have a picture here <laughs> shortly after we did that of where the road was, was widened at the end within that 49 and a half feet. Right? And then I have a picture, it snowed a couple days later, I have a picture of where the town turned around in that prescribed right of way. So I guess my point is that makes the need, having a town, a designated right of way that fits within the town's existing right of way, makes this proposed agreement moot. And I also said to Adolfo that if at such point the town wants more room or needs more room because they're getting bigger trucks, we would gladly grant the town an easement to make that. That, that would be the appropriate, appropriate legal instrument to do this. So um, those, are my, those are my thoughts on, on this whole process. You know, I was surprised when Adolfo suggested I should be here tonight to address unresolved issues because I thought I had made it clear that I had met with the road foreman, and now I'm, Bill can correct me if I'm wrong, that we had staked it out with a tape measure, and it was all hunky-dory, everybody should be happy. So, you know, the stated, the stated problem of not having uh, permission to turn my, on private property should, should be moved at this point. Do we know for sure that that's a three-rod road? I did check with Town Hall, yes. Like yep. And you can turn the truck around and not get off that three-rod? Yeah. Right now, what's plowing it is the loader. The loader, now, how's that? We have talked about changing some Loaders, yeah. make them more efficient, and that was one of them that changed. So the loader goes up in there, the truck up, uh, sands it afterwards. So when he sands it, he doesn't have the plow on. So, so there's room there. How long is a fire truck? That's a good question. I don't right, because the whole intent of keeping that road was for the, the hydrant and truck access. So if the fire truck is in there, can they turn around in that fort? The fire hydrant? truck can go on private property. Fire trucks go up driveways every time there's a fire. Well, they do, but not the fire wouldn't be at your house. So if the intent of that is access for the water, what's the turnaround radius of the fire truck? Are all the tankers single axle? Yes. So oh, how do you surrender off? Um, yeah, actually, well, that also. You're going to have Randolph Center. Uh, as I've already said, I, I would gladly, if, if we need a bigger turnaround, I'd gladly grant an easement. It's just, when I read this agreement, it's kind of hard, and, and it, forgive me, I was a little bit, you know, suspicious of signing anything after the whole, the whole road process, you know, when, as I ex expressed to, to, to many of you, I had concerns about it being brought up under safety, right? And then it was hard to get anybody to look at me with a straight face when you were standing up on my property to ex express specifically what those safety concerns were. So, you know, I've worked really hard to, to, to make this road a, 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 you know, a contributing asset to the community. You know, it, it kind of is starting to feel like the harder I work, the harder the town is working to come up with reasons why to, to not maintain it or why the fire trucks can't turn around. I don't think there's any intent there not to maintain it. It's to maintain it legally, right? So go fast forward 10 years from now and none of us are sitting here, and you're trying to work with a whole new crew, which happens, right, as people change jobs or select board members change, is it better for you to have an agreement in place that spells out everybody's responsibility? Or is the vague one 
a better position it, it, to be it's, in? Uh, well, I can tell you it's not better for me to sign an agreement that creates a second turnaround that was never part of the design process. That I don't know where that came from, right? That was never a part of the design process. It's not better for me to sign an agreement that says that the only value to my road is the, is the dry hydrant, when as I've said, it's not just my road. There are four other dwellings down off of Braley that depend on it. Well, that's right? new information to me. So well, that's, that, that, right? There's the power company, there's the land trust. I mean, is well, that? The power company has their own access and they have their own right of ways. So they go places that not necessarily. Right, but my roads. point is, I'm not going to sign you know, that agreement. And I, try, I made this clear to Adolfo. You know, and, and as I've said multiple times, I'll give you a 100 foot turnaround up there. And, it, and a survey and an easement to go with it, and that would address the town's concerns. If the town genuinely is that as their concern, that would be the best legal instrument to solve that problem. And I will make that happen. So is that something we need to run by town's attorney, or is this? Well, I think that there, there are a number of inconsistencies with what I believe TJ sharing and what I believe the conversation happened, one of them being that at the site during the process of the conversation, the location for the turnaround was as stated in the agreement, if it changed between the, when the agreement was crafted and with Bill's visits, those are entirely different. But the intent of where the turnaround was to be is what's listed in the agreement. Um, we had also, um, I agree with TJ that we've had conversations and they've all been uh, very friendly. It's all been uh, an exchange. I did also offer to TJ to share with him a word version of the agreement so that if he had any exceptions on there, he could make edits. Um, I would accept them and then I would share them with the board and then also share them with our attorney to make sure that they were appropriate. I, you know, I, I, that never went anywhere. Um, I, don't, I don't know if, DJ, if I sent it to you or if we just decided, well, let's wait in the future, but I, don't, I didn't receive any suggested edits. Um, well, I would have, but my understanding was that after a meeting with Bill and, and essentially going into town hall and, you know, forgive me, you were, you were out of town this week, that, you know, we essentially solved the problem. We, That's right. we solved the problem. Well, I thought so too. So the, I thought the town said it has a problem with turnaround private property. There's an adequate turnaround within the town right, within the town right away. Okay? And if there wasn't? If there's a problem ID. still, then we create a bigger turnaround and I give you an easement. Mm -hmm. Problem solved. That's kind of where I thought we were at. I, I can, so. if, if there's a suggestion of, I know that uh, TJ and Bill are saying that there's sufficient space for a loader and a town truck, a dump truck to make a turnaround. There is a question about whether a fire truck, which is the purpose for having the hydro, hy, dry hydrant there, mm -hmm. speak with the fire chief of the all three stations because they sometimes can all use it for mutual aid. Um, we don't know if, you know, ha having one of the trucks potentially go out and see if they can make the turn. Um, I think before that though, we'd have to really dig into the legality of whether the fire truck actually needs, you know, I I'm pretty sure that emergency vehicles, there's a lot of exclusions under the law that cover them. I don't think, I'm just saying, I think before we get all the fire chiefs out there, I can tell you physically there's plenty of room to turn around. I've had tractor trailer trucks turn around in there, mm -hmm. right? So we're not talking about physical room, we're talking about the legality. Right. That to me would be the first question, and I would happily have my attorney look into it, but I think it's probably more appropriate that the town attorney looks into it, to see, like, is this a legitimate concern? Because again, uh, it started to feel to me, well, if I could also add to one of the differences between the existing agreement that was signed several years ago with my predecessor and the existing draft agreement is that the previous agreement doesn't specify the conditions that the road has to be in. All it says is that it has to be maintained. Uh, if I understand the existing draft agreement, it's that it's to be maintained to class three standards. So the agreement that is being proposed which would strengthen TJ's claim that the road has to be maintained a certain way, it has to be has to have the ditching, it has to be the, the, the water movement, it has to be improved to certain standards, but the existing agreement that we have signed now, whether it be this board or two, three, or five years down the road, that board can then say, let's turn it into a legal trail and then just make sure that the snow is gone, but the conditions for water movement, for grading, and everything else change. But, correct me if I'm wrong, they would still have to go through the same legal process by which all roads are reclassified, correct? That, that's correct, yeah. Okay, so that to me is, I mean, I don't need to sign an agreement saying that my road is a class three road. My road is, is class three road. 
Correct, unless a future board or this board or a different board go through the road reclassification process. Well, then maybe we cross that bridge when we get to it. But we probably wouldn't. Maybe, that's fine. I mean, they might, they might throw up the... I mean, you, you got all kinds and of no, options, I, but you got to go through back through the hearing process. My whole, you process. Look, I'm trying to work with you guys. Yeah, I'm trying no, to work with you guys the whole time. My whole you goal know? here is to prevent trucks from pulling in and backing on a silly road. That was the safety issue that I saw with all the roads we looked at. Okay. Was when you go to the end of the road and there's no place to turn around. Now the guys got to back out, and every time they back out, they're subject to getting whacked by a car because if you're sitting in a truck, you can't see up or down the road. Right. So the goal here was that was my safety concern with a lot of the roads. And we agreed. And, we, and I thought we had this all worked out. So I'm not. It just seems like we need to get back to. I guess I don't understand what the problem is here. Yeah, I'm, I'm not quite sure. The town wanted to be able to turn around the, down the town right away. The town, we made sure that we were up there looking right at it. Nobody agreed that there was enough room in the town right away that day. You got the road Remember for me. You got the road for me. That's what I was saying. The day we were up there on the site sure. and we were looking at it. Remember, we were talking because it was sloped. So we had to level it off because we were worried about the tipping mm -hmm. and whatnot. And nobody thought there was enough room at that point in the town right away for the truck to back off and, and go back out. I don't recall that. Up and you no, that was well. I, that I do. Re well, the right of way is one thing, but the traveled portion of that right of way not, might not be the entire 49 and a half. And I probably, I mean, but that's why we agreed to talk about the gravel and, and improving that. And which that's I think the we fill did. that was added yes. right there. Right, that's what we did. You... So now we have what we need to have within the right of way. So and Phil's telling me that we're in good shape here, that we can turn around. And so where these stakes are, is that where the the that line up with the. The right of way. The right, the actual right of way. Yes. That we have versus just. Yes. And when, when he feet. built his pad and took where it dropped off, mm -hmm. raised it up so it's level. Right. Because we were worried about the water and the tanks shifting. Okay. Or getting us getting a truck stuck back and over the, the bank. Like Correct. That. I so thought right right TJ, when you have this like this fence post, I just lost it right here. Mm -hmm. Is that? showing the edge of where the gravel is or is that have we marked where the actual right away on the property is and that happens to line up with the end of the gravel we did the best we could i mean there's no there's no survey for blue goose drive that's the other piece of research i determined you know yeah, up at a lot of the properties over there are right surveyed. and like i said if it if, if this issue if we go deeper on this issue and we need to get the road surveyed and we want to stake out an entirely different turnaround i'm amenable to that you know i want that the reason I think I was a little bit riled when this whole thing came up under safety initially is because I take safety pretty seriously. You know, you don't take guys diving under the Antarctic ice if, if you don't take safety seriously. So I don't like it when safety gets thrown around as kind of a, a buzzword to get things done. So I'm legitimately concerned about providing a safe turnaround. And I've done everything possible, including to, to pay for the material to do that because Bill asked me to and said, this is what I need to turn around. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly what I thought we agreed to. I can confirm that um, with my conversations with TJ and my conversations with Bill, they, they both have worked together. Um, I don't recall, TJ, with our last conversation that, that the staking had already occurred and that the trucks have been turning around. I'm not saying it didn't happen. I just can't confirm that I don't recall that happening. But I can confirm that TJ has been working with Bill uh, for the better part of this year to ensure that, that at the very least the dialogue is going back and forth. I, I haven't been out to see that the stakes are there. I haven't seen these photographs, so I can't speak to, to the validity of the photographs, but Bill seems to have seen them. So. Well, let's look at what the engineer said about the Turning around, that's an issue. It's different than yeah, yeah, a truck. Right. Yeah, it articulates. So that's not a, that's not an issue. That takes less but, space. But standing. Yeah, yeah the standing the standing situation yeah. and and the fire trucks. So you know, but if all fire trucks are single axle, they should be able to make that <laughs> corner because they're not they don't have a plow on. Your forty nine feet has is the road coming in and plus the. Turn. Yeah. No. And, and, and like I said, if. if if you guys want to get folks out there, and if we need more room, I got it's not it's not a lack of room. We can keep going. You know, I got 50 acres there. We can 
<laughs> but some of this is to define that area because if I remember correctly the day we were out there there was a comment made about sometimes they pull up and back in the other way and sometimes they pull up and back in over this way and right, right. you know so you, we can't say to you well wherever the truck wants to turn around that day they can turn around right we need them to be consistent so you know sure this is where they're going to turn around and this is how it's going to be and they know absolutely when I come and in I, I go here I go here I go out if there's anybody in the way, I want to be the, I mean, my wife will say I'm kind of a, a, I'm a maniac when people come over, <laughs> right? I'm like, don't park there, you know, because, so. There shouldn't um, be any issues pushing snow back because you're going to be using the loader, right? right? So that's going to be a non-issue. It's not like it's going to fill in because we have the equipment there to move it out when we need to move it out. And if you're using a loader now. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So the loader's pushing it. The loader's going to push it back, right? Next year they may use a truck there. Well, yeah, that's true. Right. So, so okay, but then you have to go do some. You have to push back snow banks anyways. Sure. And I just want to articulate one last time that if, if the needs change and we need more room, that's that's merely a legality. I mean, we could make that happen physically in a couple hours, right? As far as the permissions, I would gladly grant an easement, and I think that would be most appropriate considering the fact that we have a fifteen thousand dollar firefighting resource that serves six houses immediately. Right within yeah. a thousand feet, with unlimited fire, with water resources, right. I think it's important that we don't cut corners, maybe just because it's a little easier to get a landowner agreement, you know, but to solidify something with a better legal instrument. If there's that need, if this need meets it, which I think it does for now, then I'm happy. I think somehow we got to look at what that turning radius is. If it's or enough, truck, we're all good. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Well, that's the last little missing piece. You just got to get that assessed. Yeah. And then determine if that's something I said. Like, legally, do they even need that? Because I would suspect that maybe they don't. Well, you know, I'm all about dotting eyes across our T's, but I don't want to get too far down the road. Right. So I would suggest that we get the fire department to figure out can you turn the trucks around here? I can't believe they can't because if they're single axles, they should be able to. The only right? thing you got to look at is what's the turning radius of a tanker because you're not going to have the other ones up there. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. If all the tankers, tankers are single tanker. axle. What's the biggest tanker and what's the turning radius it needs? And then put the question to the league on can I, I don't know that a, a fire truck can just go anywhere. But I don't either. Yeah. <laughs> I hope they can. <laughs> Hope they're not going to run in to get permission, you know, if your house is on fire. Can we go into your driveway? Well, not if it's yours. Maybe it is, but. Okay. All right. That's where I'd like to go with that. I have to one. check with all of those. You TJ, I'd reach out to you. Absolutely. Yeah, we can get the fire chief up there, we, you know. Yeah. I don't know that we need people up there yet. Do we got to do? don't know what that distance is. Sure. And if it's what the environment is. They got specs on all those trucks. They can yeah. tell you what the turning radius is. Mike can look it right up. Yeah, it's not like, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not like, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not on the, they have a model. Right. You can put it on and it'll tell you how many feet you need. Yeah, here. Yeah, he's not, but actually Mike's living in Grand. Chief here in the village has the model at his office that can. So we're good for right now. I'll wait to hear from Adolfo and, yep. you know, the road format things Yep. Okay. We'll look at the turning radiuses and all that. Thank you. Do you have more on TJ's driveway? Yes, actually. Uh, sorry, I um, wait for the signal. Um, so I've actually written thank you notes to Randolph's uh, road crew because we have a very difficult road to deal with. And, you know, especially when you sort of look at the situation and are like, I'll put the snow here, and you've thought about our needs. It's really remarkable that you're doing that at four in the morning. So a big thank you to your crew. Sure. Um, <laughs> we appreciate it. Uh, the reason that I wanted to just add on to what TJ said is that um, I've uh, been in and out of Blue Goose since before you guys had it, because we used to get hay from Mary and Ann, who had it before you. And I turned around horse trailers with our two-wheel drive truck in the winter time <laughs> um, on your uh, land before the road improvement. So I can vouch that, that I'm always happier to be on your place than our place. Um, and that's another reason I'm really grateful to your road crew. The, uh, the, we also have a shared right-of-way with TJ that was affected by this, and that's part of the reason I've been following this closely. But TJ's access remains our only way out when the river cuts off 
our roads access to Route 14. And so it, the continued uh, support to TJ's road is also the only out for all of the people that live on Braley Covered Drake Road, which has been renamed Laughing Waters Way. We've been grateful to TJ and Terry and Anne before you for letting us bring all of the heavy equipment off that let our houses be constructed that let us contribute to Randolph's tax base. And so uh, I just wanted to add that one sort of unique perspective, which is that there, we are otherwise on a dead end road and we can go across uh, and have gone with very heavy equipment across uh, the short distance from the end of Braley Carver Bridge to uh, Blue Goose. In fact, the old Stagecoach Road is an ancient road that ran um, across that corner. The, um, so that's, that's sort of just a practical perspective from one other group of people that are affected and appreciate the town's maintenance of that road as a, as a sort of an out, a get out of jail card for us. The other uh, just note is um, a, a question, and I'm on the town's budget committee and the Economic Development Council as well, and so I'm known for asking, gosh, you know, road maintenance is half of our town's budget historically, and um, because we have such a high percentage of dirt roads, what is the right equipment to handle the uh, mix of roads that Randolph uniquely has? The topic right now is just Blue Bruce Drive. But this is, we can, well, we can, okay, so is there going to be a point to, to comment on the uh, road, um, the road question generally? These, these particular I, I, I don't, CJ, you're on the budget committee, so I know you can pose these questions specifically to the finance director and the budget committee as a member, and yes. the town select board mm -hmm. also has meetings specifically on the budget, which right. have been warned and are on the website. So it if the questions these are. roads because the turnaround question is directly related to the type of equipment that we're running. We used to use pickup trucks, we've upgraded to larger equipment. And I just wanted to ask whether there was a connection between our larger equipment and the turnarounds required. Because it does, I mean, I know for sure because sometimes the road crew has to go back and get something across our covered bridge because the bridge won't accommodate some of the big equipment, you know? So it's a pain in the neck because you're having to arrange crews. But this affects our, our road costs and, and scheduling and everything else. It's, you know, it's, it's a pain. But the question really is just one of, you know, given your joint responsibility for keeping the town running in a cost-effective way, to just ask the question, have we looked also at the equipment and the turnaround sizes to see if our historical ability to maintain these roads with the turnarounds we have is being affected by the change in equipment? So that's the reason for raising the question in this context. Yeah. So you did miss the topic, and we moved on from I'm sorry. when we were looking, and it's not under this agenda okay. item. It was under highway equipment. But and it ties we, into the road question. Well, it, the question was on the equipment itself, mm -hmm. and yeah. replacing two trucks. And the vote was to replace the two trucks that needed to be replaced, a six-wheeler and a ten-wheeler, mm -hmm. with two ten-wheelers. Right. And there was a whole discussion about capacity, yep. trucking movements, lengths of routes. Sure, yeah, and those are very discussion. valid questions, but yep. what I'm trying to point out is that there is also a link to this topic. Mm. Well, not necessarily, not completely, just, but we can. I we're having an essential discussion on turnarounds, and that discussion on turnarounds mm -hmm. has come up with most of the road questions. So because the equipment <coughs> affects the turnaround radius, I wanted to just bring up the that that as, as is my duty, I believe, because economic development is also affected by the fact that half of these roads are farms, which is, you know, agriculture is part of our traditional base and part of our tourist. Which is arguably. I think you're, you're generalizing yeah. what a farm is I'm, and I'm generalizing the business types and the roads that have been reviewed, mm -hmm. which is why I, I, I'd like to maybe suggest to the board that this, you're venturing into a topic that's not covered on the agenda item, which could then lead into trouble because we're having a conversation with the board on a topic that wasn't warned. Um, and so the, the, the issues that you're bringing up, I'm not saying they're not important, mm -hmm. I'm just saying that because it's not an agenda item, it wasn't warned, not everyone else in the town had the ability to, has the ability to speak on them. Uh, but the understanding that you also had the ability to speak with the Economic Development Committee because you're a member, to speak with the Budget Committee because you're a member, 
your knowledge of the budget of the select board having budget meetings specifically to talk about the budget I feel that those would be the more appropriate venues to discuss your issues about farms economic development budget in general and then share concerns with the select board as they specifically deal with the budget as it is publicly warned so that everyone can have input on the process those are very fair points that you both have raised and I appreciate that my specific point was the possible link between new equipment and turnaround radiuses and these roads that we're having to evaluate. So I probably should not have mentioned the other uh, things that I do, but I think those points are going to stand on their own. So let I think me the turnaround on the roads is a valid piece in the equipment. The exactly. problem is the majority of these roads have a straight right away. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter what you have for equipment, you don't have the ability to get off. You don't have the land you need to make right. that turnaround, even if it's with a pickup. Yeah, I'm, I'm personally familiar with about uh, uh, a little over, uh, about 30% of them, and those do have turnarounds. I'm not familiar with the rest, so I definitely wouldn't profess to speak to those. Okay. Thank you for the time. So we'll get back to you after we <laughs> get some legal and look at the fire trucks. Okay. Next is the uh, Lister's office, errors and omissions. Uh, per state stat uh, statute, uh, the Lister's office have to submit uh, a final report of errors and omissions. Um, the form that is going to be reported to the state uh, should be in your packet. There was a, a change recently that took place. I want to make sure that the information in your packet is accurate. Uh, the amount listed under the property for the second second item listed on the list should be original value six hundred and eighteen thousand. Just want to make sure that that is what's in your packet, and the corrected value six hundred eighty six thousand. Uh, if it's not, I just wanted to point that out. And the corrected list is in the signing packet, so that is the only change on the on the errors and omissions list. It went, say that again, we show the original at 686, the corrected at 618 going down because it went into current use. Right, it should, the original should be 618, and from what was explained to me by the listers was that it was a, an addition of purchase property that was added to the original plot, mm -hmm. which raised the value of the original from 618,000 to 686,000 with the difference being the $68,000. That's why that one shows that it's off. It was original one large plot, purchased a second plot, added the second plot to the original plot. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Okay, Dennis uh, asked me to talk with him today. I did, and he said that uh, he explained everything to me, so if you have any questions that I can answer, since he couldn't be here. This all pertains to current use and merging. Merging property. Questions? Anybody want to make a motion? Hmm. I'll move that we approve the um, errors and emissions change for the 2019 grand list. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Allocation increase for Brook Street. Uh, is, there any, Chairman, is, is there a chance that we could be bumped up among several people here? And I don't know if the other agenda items involve anybody besides, but it would certainly help folks who are traveling. If it's any help, what I was are you here for? for the RACDC uh, Wi Fi downtown. The little thing we added. The change, add yeah, the add-on. Yeah. If it's any help to the board, uh, I was going to ask the board to skip this one item. We did not provide any addition, any information for the board to consider for that, that item, so to not take any action. I'm fine with it. Sure. Mm -hmm. That'd be great. Skipping is good. Sure. I'm fine. Okay. We have 
Right. Downtown Wi-Fi. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, you've seen the first version of this. This is just an update with some of the stuff that we're able to figure out with our um, visits to the properties. And then I have a few in case. I don't know if you've seen this map, but there's there's sort of a map of what the network will look like. Um, so um, the things that changed involve mostly our ability to figure out whether and what um, town buildings were um, going to confirm our thesis that certain town buildings would be helpful to the, the network and to evaluate how the router antennas could be installed to complete the backbone system that we're planning. And so uh, with the Dolphos help, we were able to connect with people who led us into the Chandler building, which um, Chandler had also helped us uh, access the skating rink, um, and then uh, the uh, firehouse. And in all cases, we think there are um, fairly easy ways uh, to install the router equipment on those buildings, and it seems like the signal is good in those areas, and there's either existing, there are either existing power plugs there or existing power near enough so that it would be um, a fairly simple matter to have an electrician either install power where power already exists but there's no plug or to string uh, either extension cord or some sort of conduit to an existing power supply. Um, and so I, I just added into this on this first place where in those facilities it seemed like the best place to put the routers. And then um, the other thing, we had done an estimate of you know, wattage and cost, and we were able to narrow that down because the Dolpha supplied us with the price per kilowatt. Um, and so those estimates are there. There's two kinds of equipment. One is the larger antenna, which is the roof antenna, or router. And the other is a, a smaller, uh, more sort of ground level. Um, router and they are just very slightly different in wattage but it comes for the the bigger one is actually lower wattage that comes to about $17.15 a year in cost based on the one uh, 17.8 cents and then the uh, other one is slightly more I think it's 18.71 the total cost per year of these would be about $70 give or take a few cents We've been asking the building owners that are allowing us to do this if they would absorb the cost of that power for us and maybe do the installation cost. Um, if that's not possible, we, can, uh, we don't want that to be an impediment to the system. But it's a fairly modest cost, and um, that will also enable Wi-Fi to be around that building and in the vicinity. Uh, so um, I think the other answers haven't really changed all that much. It was mostly the power supply and the locations that we were investigating this time. Um, so if there are questions on any of that, we'd be happy to answer it. But um, the request is that the, the town enable us to give us permission to um, install these routers to enable this system to have its backbone and for us to be able to provide free Wi-Fi to the town, downtown area. Um, and we have the permissions from the other um, buildings that we need to form the rest of the mesh system. So far, so good. So the, the power is the minor cost. What about the fifteen to 20000 to yeah. get it going, and then ten to 12000 a year? Yeah. Where is that? So um, we're in the process of raising uh, sponsorship money to cover that cost, and we're about, I don't know, a third of the way, plus or minus, in the first year cost, and we've got other inquiries out. 
it's obviously going to be a little easier when the system is up and running. So our ACDC has taken on itself basically to say we're going to kick this off based on the initial interest that was expressed. Jamie's been working with Nathan to sort of go around and explain the system to people and uh, including potential sponsors. And we've already had quite a bit of you know, interest and commitments for several thousand and other you know, people thinking about it now. Once the system's up and running, it's going to be a little easier because it's, it's a thing. These people are, are what they call early adopters, so they're, you know, um, sort of standing with us ahead of having the thing built to support it. Question? Sure, okay. the board first, okay? Oh, sure, right away. So the, what you're asking the town to do is be allowed to to go on the fire station, the skating rink, and the Chandler building, and then just the power. Just Chandler? And, and in the kiosk, the smaller one in the kiosk, which already has power to it as well. Okay. And Chandler pays the power bill, correct, in that relationship? I, I uh, would have to confirm. I'm not entirely sure. I, I think they do, but I can't. I can't confirm that. And would that then become the reason the roof leaks? Fix a roof to put the antenna on. <laughs> okay. Don't know if we could get that one. But they're working on something. This is a little stretch. <laughs> I have one question. Yeah. So I'm noticing at town hall, the post office are not in a circle. Could that be fixed if you were to locate one of those towers on top of the current historical society building or the police station? Um, I'll let, I'll let Nathan yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, I, Nathan. I, <laughs> I'm just so used to answering the questions. I, I apologize. I realize you didn't address me. Um, but but um, a lot of that is we have to be super careful about a residence. Um, because it is a system that will be on all the time, right? 24/7, and we made the decision not to to have any sort of limits or or breaks in the service. Um, and in order for it to function correctly for the immediate downtown area, we will need to be really careful about providing it to private residences. And so that's a, that's kind of like an interference thing. It's almost too close to the edge to. Okay. Right, just, I mean, uh, another thing I'm a little apprehensive about is the apartment building. Uh, behind Dunkin' Donuts, like those those people essentially will be probably receiving free internet service uh, if if we are able to, to pull this plan off. And there's, I mean, they're just so close to the downtown area. Yeah, I mean, that's, it's, 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 a, it's a balancing like a act, I'm sure. It's yeah, a right. And, and because our our main cost, like Julie said, is the the yearly fee for internet service. Right. And uh, the fee that that we, you know, we have a number and we negotiated. We think that will sustain around. Two or three hundred um, people just kind of surfing the internet on their phone or their laptop uh, periodically throughout the day, um, and we have the option from the company in our contract to uh, double that speed in a fifteen-minute notice. So, so uh, events and things like that wouldn't bring us down. Um, but all our cost calculation is is based on. Uh, people that are walking through town, eating at restaurants, visiting, right. uh, patronizing stores, and a little bit for a uh, private residence that we can't really avoid, but we don't really want to become like people's home Netflix, YouTube. Right, we don't want streaming here. <laughs> right, exactly, and we don't, um, but we also don't want to block those people, right. and we don't want to implement any throttling. So really the, the very easiest way to make this all work perfectly is just if you, you just won't get the signal there and so then it just won't be a problem um, and it, this is all a very delicate matter I realize that all the little uh, circles on the map seem like they may be a little haphazard but um, I painstakingly <laughs> laid out where all those need to be uh, including the uh, elevation angles because uh, elevation is a huge thing in downtown Randolph you can uh, you can be in one location you know, a six foot difference makes the difference between one bar or five bars. Five bars. Yeah. And so we, we, those are optimal placements there. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I'm can just, I, just can curious. Can I just add though to that, that um, we didn't want to get sort of too far. We, we, we want to build basic, which is why we were calling it sort of the backbone. And it may be possible that like one of these smaller units that's not placed on a roof can be more strategically located in these other places. but 
but we sort of need to sort of get it up and running so that he can do more testing. Yep. And we can know, like, if theoretical is one thing, but, you know, being able to actually walk around and test the signal like we've been doing with the one right. we have up is different. So Are you able to track it's, the it's activity possible. in each one of these locations? Is that something that's possible? Yeah, there's a, a bunch of metrics as possible. Right. We did ask, you know, if there's anything that we asked, I think, of Adolfo and Josh, is if there's anything specific besides, you know, we're in the process of thinking about which metrics make sense that give us information without being, you know, intrusive, which give us information which we don't have about our downtown to help with, you know, merchants and visitors and events and things like that. You know, how many people are driving through and not stopping, or how many, you know, so if there's stuff like that that you think, wow, it would be interesting to have that metric, we could probably get it. It's mm -hmm. just that at some point you have to say, okay, we're just going to collect this, and, and then we're going to figure out, like, how we can use that to better advantage our downtown. But like I said, I mean, the thing we think at this point, like, we've done enough so that we think this works. To go any further, I think we really need to start with this, and then, and then see where it goes from there. That's fine. Yeah. Got to start somewhere. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it looks, questions from the board? looks well thought out to me, so. Yeah. Question from the audience. Yes. Sir, you had a question. I, you know what? You answered it. I oh, do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the other thing I didn't mention, but I know um, we've talked about that may not be obvious, <coughs> is that so people would go to a landing page, which is where these sponsors would be recognized, or people would say, this is downtown Wi Fi. And, um, and there, we, there are ways to sort of, um, short of sort of excluding people, to say, you're just going to have to re-click every once in a while. So you won't, be, you won't be able to sit there and, you know, video game all day or something like that without having to sort of, that's what a lot of these uh, systems do to sort of, um, to sort of curb that, you know, constant extensive use. constant yeah. use. And so that and, and you know, trying to time it so maybe it's an hour so it's not too much and bothersome but enough so that people have to recheck in they just have to click the box again but it it lets them see the sponsors again the sponsors will rotate it it lets them see what they're doing again that's good and it also prevents the abuse of the system i could add this, i think this may be the first time i see the map and my home is like a block away from one of the circles, so. Oh, wow. For a small fee at all. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> just outside of the free coverage. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. You just get into a good part of a show and you'd have to click the box. Yeah, right. Something. It's like, oh, no. <laughs> you'll have a half a bar. <laughs> Well, and that's the idea, just to make it slightly annoying to use it in your home, because it really is a tool for it's, yeah, it's not really it on you. I mean, I'm, I'm against any limits. I love, I hate that the word unlimited doesn't mean that anymore, and, mm -hmm. and I don't, I don't want to falsify anything about what we're offering, but we, it is a tool to help the downtown and for people that are shopping or, I mean, yeah, I think even now, I, um, I, I carry this, this thing is my life, but I, I see the TOR free Wi-Fi outside. It, it is kind of adorable to me that it says the word free, but there's a password on it that I can't get to. Uh, I can't remember how I, this is, I've never had that password in this before just now. I've owned this for a year because it's on inside the building. I know it says the word free <laughs> in, in big letters, but it's not. Apparently not, and I have the same conversation with the Comcast man. Oh, we, we have free Xfinity Wi-Fi. It's everywhere. <laughs> yeah, it is everywhere. It's in my way when I'm trying to throw out other signals, but yeah, it's free for two hours once, and then never again. Okay, well, I guess that was, oh, sure, okay. So what do you need from us approval for these? Approval to use the structures. Use the structures. And, um, you know, the decision on the electrical, we'll do the installation stuff, but if we, as the town would contribute the cost of electricity, it's one less sort of logistical as well as financial hassle for us. Almost 70 bucks a year. Expenders. I think the town can swing it. Yeah, I think so. Huh? <laughs> How'd you get the seven day? I thought you said 17 and 18. So it's 17 per. There's three on the roofs, and then one that's a little more that's oh, on the okay. uh, street level. Uh, so it comes to about 70. Okay. What's the motion look like? Can you, you got Do it? we give permission to go on the top of Chandler? 
but that probably has to be coordinated with them. It would be coordinated. The lease agreement does not preclude the town from having this type of agreement. Uh, it, it's outside of the building, and the, the agreement is for use of the building. So we could arguably say this is outside and not going to affect the operation of Chandler. So um, we could coordinate it. Sound, it sounds yeah. like you have permission from them already anyway. Yeah, they, they yeah. like the idea. Yeah. We, we just didn't know who had the right to say yes. Right. Well, if we both say yes, then we're covered. Then we're good. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> no matter who. <laughs> Okay. So I think any motion. Go sure, I'll, I'll move that we um, approve um, our CDC's our CDC's request to put um, the necessary um, Wi-Fi equipment on the three buildings in the kiosk um, that we've discussed, and that the that in, and that the town will pay for electricity to maintain the signals for those for those uh, devices. Second. Just a discussion before we vote. Are we going to reimburse Chandler? Chandler's the one that pays the power. Just don't want to get that in. The $17 a year? I don't think we're paying the power bill down there. I don't believe it. Because of all the theatrical stuff and the lighting stuff. We'll I pay don't the believe. power at the buildings we pay the power at? I don't know. I guess we should check it, but I, I don't know. We should read we do? our numbers to show the percentage of power it uses of one of those theater lights. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm sure this is pretty minimal. Spotlight on for five minutes, probably the same amount. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained? Motion carries. All right, great. Thanks very much. Thank you. Just out of curiosity, what's the target date for possibly up and running? Um. Hoping January we have to get um, some additional permissions for our building mm -hmm. to get first slide in, okay. and then it depends on their schedule. So it could be within a couple months. But um, now that we have this permission, we can start putting the equipment on. So we're ready when that's done. Great. Good work. Review of the Maple Street project. In your packets um, is uh, an action item sheet and also um, the, the summary sheet provided by Two Rivers out of Quichi that uh, our Regional Planning Commission who conducted the uh, traffic study on Maple Street, Highland Avenue, and then also on Prospect. Um, also conducted a traffic study on Clay White, but uh, that, that, it's a secondary, uh, uh, a secondary issue. The project um, uh, information that was given to us um, conflicts with reports that have been made by the residents. Uh, residents claim that uh, Maple Street is frequented by many, many um, uh, large 18-wheel style cargo trucks. Mm -hmm. They have shared with me videos of, or a video of a truck and a photograph of a truck. Most recently, this is uh, well, before late fall, um, the data that was presented by Two Rivers Adequichi indicates that over the course of a two-week period, there were only five 18-wheel style trucks that went down Maple Street. Um, so it, it was a little not matching up with what was presented by the residents. I, I think it's still secondary to the fact that the road does have structural, I won't say structural issues, but repavement issues or lack thereof. Um, so the road does need to be repaved, but the issue of the 18-wheelers is germane in that um, the width of the road is, is also part of the, the conversation. Whether the road is two-way or one-way, the proposal presented by residents has been that it be two-way, I'm sorry, that it be one-way, because a two-way option, uh, we just don't have enough room and the town would have to purchase right-of-way on private property that would create other problems. So at this point, what we have is um, estimated cost for paving uh, Maple Street. We don't have um, traffic flows on how, for example, Highland Avenue would be affected if uh, Maple Street becomes one way. Uh, we do know that residents on Highland Avenue, for the most part, oppose, or some residents on Highland Avenue oppose Maple Street becoming one way because of their perceived traffic issues. Um, 
So we present this information to the board to potentially ask for the authorization to have the public meeting. Previous public meetings that have been held have only included residents on Maple Street, and issues were created when the conversation led to an issue being brought to the select board about the project itself. Residents on Highland Avenue said we have not been involved in the process. So now that we have traffic study, a traffic study, um, we can then share that information to residents on Highland Avenue because we have traffic information for not just the volume of vehicles but type of vehicles for Highland Avenue, Prospect, uh, and Maple, and we could share that information with them for, for discussion. I think it's a good idea to hold the meeting with everybody, but I'm concerned that we don't have data out of the traffic study done by Two Rivers that accurately reflects what's mm -hmm. actually taking place on the road. I mean, yeah. I've been up there many times and seen trailer trucks on that road, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I think it happens. I don't know how they get in their roads. I'm not sure whether it's GPSs that are guiding them down the road or they're taking That's a shortcut or they're missing. Mm -hmm. You know, they missed the Beanville turn, so now they're going to take that street, which is where their GPS puts them. You know, is there a, can you put up a sign that says no 18 wheelers? Does that take the problem away? I don't know. So I'm just, what happens? And I think that's part of the discussion. The fire, mm -hmm. if I remember correctly, the fire department wanted the road to go one way going towards Gifford. Towards Gifford. Mm -hmm. which that would eliminate your trailer trucks, right? Because if I understood Matt's comments when we were having this discussion, they have trailer trucks that come to them and then they they can direct them out so the opposite the, way. So after you go past Gifford, you would then determine that it's just one way, so there'd be a no entrance beyond the Gifford parking lot? Correct. Partially dual, for the most part, it'd be one way dual way through, yeah, through the Gifford House portion of it would have to be two way. The intersection. Mm -hmm. right, to the intersection of Highland it would be two way. Yeah. And what's the reason we just can't leave it the way it is and pave it? Was there is there a requirement that required us to do this? Was it needing a sidewalk or sidewalk. sidewalk is an issue. There's not enough space in the right of way. Not enough space in the right way for them. And that's what it was. It was not enough space for two way <clears> and the sidewalks. Okay. I knew mean, there was and the sidewalks were horrible right now. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not even existent, right? <laughs> and where it is, there's a little square. Uh, I think that are all like... Yeah. Well, it's like, West, it's like Weston Street. I never knew there were sidewalks down there until I took down the building behind the house that I own, and all of a sudden, wow, look at this. There's a sidewalk here. You take the excavator bucket, and there's the sidewalk. It's all grassed over. Yeah, it's but like it's there. Like chunks of maple is like that. Chunks of maple are like that, yeah. yeah. So. Okay. I have contacted Two Rivers and shared the concern of the lack of 18 wheelers on their study versus what information had been shared with me and their response was that they stood by the results. Mm -hmm. However, the person that responded was not the person that does traffic issues for Two Rivers is that person who's on maternity leave. Uh, so it was the person in charge of the issue while that person is out. But I still feel that the response would be would have been the same. So was can they did they can they share with you what direction the tractor trailers were going, or is it just say they have them on at present? Uh, did they say they're going. I do have the raw data. They showed none. The raw data tells me that from what direction from Prospect. I mean, from sorry, from from Main Prospect Street going to Prospect. I mean, uh, Prospect to South Main or South Main Street. Yeah, the the raw data says right, from right. what direction they're going. Yeah, Pleasant Street. Um, I don't recall. There were five over two week period, five eighteen wheelers, roughly like one every other every couple of days. Yeah. Um, I can pinpoint what direction those five were going. I just uh, I have the raw data on my computer. Okay, I just, I'm just curious. I mean, if it's if it's an issue where they're turning off from South Main and going down there because they missed the Beanville turn, mm -hmm. that. I, couldn't we just can we fix that with the sign? I don't know if it's in the try to. <laughs> no, doesn't work. Um, well, you can, but uh, I mean, I run into this all over the place. You know, I'm out delivering tent projects, and you know, it's like, up, oh, no, no, no trucks are with this weight allowed. Yeah. So that's one one of the issues. But if 
doesn't solve the issue. It doesn't okay. solve it. I get that. Mm -hmm. but if we're gonna... And the trucks aren't a problem if the street is either widened for two lanes or mm -hmm. made one way with a sidewalk. Mm -hmm. The truck issue is Then the truck issue is away. So the big question is, what does that road look like going into the future? Is it two lane and we go through the process of trying Fine to acquire right the additional right away? Or is it one lane? Or is it two lane with no sidewalk? The Which report I think produced is a problem if I heard from the neighborhood up there because folks at Gifford go out walking at lunchtime. Mm -hmm. They're going to be in the road. Mm -hmm. It did sound like the there. folks who live on Maple Street would very much like to have a usable sidewalk. Mm -hmm. And a one way road. And a, <laughs> and a one way road if that's if 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 that's what they need, would need to do. Yeah. Right. But, but some of them you talk to have no desire whatsoever to lose any of their lawn or. Sure. Any yeah, of that I can get that. To, the, so. to a road, sure. and some of them were like, "Well, we'd give it up if it meant we had a big sidewalk." Yeah. So I sounds like you need to have a good couple of meetings. I think so. <clears throat> yep. What does it look and like? I, and I think if you're going to part of public participation, how does that affect Highland? Do we leave Highland the way it is? Right. Well, again, it's. I think, I think it's where you got to bring them all together. together. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. I do know, even though there are questions about. The results provided in Two Rivers uh, traffic study, they do confirm that all, ex with the exception, I think one road classifies as extremely low usage. Um, I think there's a level of either five or either high 400 or 500 uh, volume of vehicles on a daily basis using the road, and for the most part, all of our roads are within the high 100s or to the very low 400s. Um, I don't recall which road was in the 400 usage mm -hmm. on a daily basis, but. Their, their, their response was that, for the most part, all of our roads are very low usage in that area. At least because for whatever they're... Maple Street. Yeah. 417. Mm -hmm. All right. Give them all here, have a meeting up at. Just be there and check out when the parade went by. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Probably it's, not. I think it was May, late May, early June, so yeah. For the Fourth of July parade. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think you just get them all together. So is this a meeting for just the residents or anybody? Uh, I think if, if you know, I could suggest to the board that a meeting could include all of the, the residents on both Maple Street, Highland Avenue, Fairview, Prospect, because it's included in the general area of the general mm -hmm. traffic flow. Yeah, just, that, that just captures be, everyone there. That little chunk mm -hmm. of the community. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know if. Uh, Two Rivers has the modeling capacity, but it's out there somewhere to show if you moved Maple to a one-way street going, and they'll do it either direction. This is where traffic might move on to. Uh, we, we did inquire with Two Rivers. They said that they could, that's not a modeling they can do, but they did say that uh, Du Bois and King would be able to do that. Um, I don't know what the cost would be. It would be at a cost. Um, well, you're not really looking. You're only looking at 400. Yeah. To then it, allocate yeah. throughout the it'd system. Be, it'd be worth at least finding out what it would cost, and mm -hmm. if it wasn't too much, because that would be really nice information to be able to have, rather than having a room full of people speculating about mm -hmm. what yeah. what they think is going to happen. 400 more cars are coming down my street. Yeah. <laughs> we did. I think the board did previously award the engineering portion of this project before it asked that we look into the traffic study and everything else to DNK. So I can reach out to DNK and say, you know, what would it cost to do a traffic study on just these roads with the resident count as it is, and we have the traffic study, so we know how many vehicles are on there, like Trini pointed out. So mm -hmm. I mean, they might be able to just take this data and mm -hmm. use it to uh, to feed their model. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, I think you need some what-if scenarios. Mm -hmm. So you can say, based on this data, if we did this, then this could be the result. Because yeah. Yeah. the people that are there on a regular basis are going to find another way through. They're not going to... Yeah, gonna and then, then maybe there'll be recommendations. Another, a new route. What's that going to be? And it probably gets bigger than the data we have, because then you've got to look at origin, depending where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. So what I'll do is I'll work on a few dates and 
probably not around the holidays, maybe mid to late January, early February, and then get notices out. And uh, probably will be able to bring to the board a few dates in its January meeting, so then it could, you know, discuss if those dates work for the board. If not, we can pick other dates. What are you looking for a time frame for Maple Street eventually? Uh, construction. Definitely not this year. We're still working on issues with the budget. Um, uh, most likely, if everything goes well, the meetings go very well, we're able to get a very quick and not very costly uh, traffic flow study from our, our, you know, anyone. Um, we could potentially start working on this road, not this upcoming calendar year, but maybe 2021. Um, the road is in, yeah, it's in, it's in, it's in bad shape, but I don't think it's going to create any major problems within a one-year period. And, you know, I'd say if we were delaying this five or five or seven years, it'd be a much bigger issue. But if we're just being delayed one year, so that we can provide the residents the information they actually asked for, um, but you know, it's not that we're just delaying it because we want to delay it. It's we're delaying it because they asked for certain things. We're looking to give it to them, but and still remaining respectful of their tax dollars and not just. Throwing it away. Come spring, we'll just fix the potholes again and mm -hmm. yeah. keep going. We've got to do this yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't. We'll yeah. do this once. We want to do it once. get it right. <laughs> yeah. And I do feel that if if there is no communication with the residents, I think the lack of communication and frustration is is what would create problems. But if we have the community meetings and tell them this is what the plan is, this is what we're hoping to do. They may not be happy that it'll take another year, but at least they'll know why it's taking. Well, it sounds like it's going to take another year, regardless. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the, so this just puts us on a comfortable path where we can really investigate mm -hmm. and you know have the proper meetings, get input from the public, <clears throat> follow up with them, answer any questions they have, require more data if we have to, um, before we then start any digging. Mm -hmm. Except to find the sidewalks, right? Except to find the sidewalks. Well, <laughs> we'll find them when we go to dig them up, and dig up the street anyway, right? They may be there. You may find them. Might be under somebody's lawn. Okay. <clears throat> Water wastewater department system disconnect. 14 Park Street and 20 North Main. We have had two buildings demolished. Um, First is 14 Park Street, which had been abandoned and uh, had become uh, uh, blighted over the last, I think, decade. I'm not entirely sure how long. Uh, the neighboring property owner purchased the property, um, obtained a permit to demolish the structure and plans to just keep it clean and open, and no longer wishes to have a, a, a physical connection to the water system. Uh, the property at 20 North Main Street was destroyed by a uh, structure fire, where it was involved in a structure fire and was subsequently demolished and is no longer at the location. It's just an empty, empty back parking area now. So both residents have been informed of their options. We informed them that if they, if they plan to build in the future, they should maintain their allocation. Um, they both have confirmed that they have no wish or desire to build in the future and they're just going to uh, leave the area completely as is um, and would like to completely disconnect from both systems. Sounds like a plan. Comments? Motion? Motion to uh, allow these property owners to disconnect from the water wastewater system. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Town report, dedication, photos, and a select board. So we don't have any information to share with the board now, but we wanted to start to obtain your, your input, um, potentially asking the board to consider um, someone to volunteer to write the message from the select board to the community for the town report, um, a potential person to suggest for for us to dedicate, the, for the select board to dedicate the town report, um, and then also photographs that uh, you know we're going to start collecting to ask the board if they have any photographs of the town that they took this year to share them with us, or if they have any suggestions for what should be on the cover, um, any iconic thing that has happened over the year that 
they would like to include as a cover photo. The widow's tales. Hmm. The widow's tales. There you go. It seems to be like the most photographed part of Brandon wow. Buffer. I think <laughs> that's a major accomplishment <laughs> right there. Seems, seems like. Wouldn't really, that be appropriate? Be totally appropriate. You know who's got a really neat picture is uh, Zach Freeman. Yeah, Zach's got some. There's a lot. A so really we, we have a contest. Ram Ramsey's got to take him quite a few pictures. Yeah. Submit your best entry. And she's got. She's had some really nice ones. What do you think? Because yeah. yeah. uh, So how would we get that out? Why don't when, we, let when, when we have to have the? Why don't we let our art? There you go. Do it. Mm -hmm. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Let's put the arts council to work. I like that. That's a great idea. Let them find us a. We pick the subject, you guys provide the photo, you can run the competition and just bring us back your winner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can do that. I like that idea. You could also ask them to sort through the photographs that are available for the winter parade, for the 4th of July parade, and ask them to pick the photographs. Some other photographs for just throughout, right the out throughout the book. Oh, mm -hmm. yes. Or mm -hmm. any others that people or want any, to submit. Or anything mm -hmm. anybody wants to submit. Yeah, and oh, then we can take the final photographs, bring them to the board. Sounds like a great I think arts, that's arts, arts committee. That's a perfect <laughs> arts council for <laughs> job. Yeah. Right? Arts council subcommittee. Yeah. I think so. Okay. Nice. I like that idea. I bet they will too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> sure. They got it. <laughs> Go for it. That's them. Okay. Uh, then we have to find dedication. Dedication. And, uh, um, Okay. Yeah, is there another committee somewhere we can? Uh, yeah, who can we put that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, oh, just something to think about. Yeah, we'll just get names. Ponder that one. Yeah. yeah. And about also, another thing on photos, there's quite a few sculptures on uh, not just the whale's head. Right. But Are there other sculptures three, for sure? Three or four others that oh, yeah. might be good. Yeah. Okay. Or stuff at the cemetery and frog. And yeah. Yeah. Well, you put the Arts Council right on that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do that. I'll reach out to them. We only have one mural, so I'm, one mural's. So I think we got it. Yeah. It's a good idea, Pat. Sculptures would be a good little piece. Yeah. Okay. And then the, the dedication and the select board we could put message. There's no reason to for the board to feel like it has to choose now it's just we Think could select in you know the january meeting but that would be the last meeting mm -hmm. where the decision would have to be made for the book is due for printing okay okay two rivers at a quichi brownfield assessment program grant to ratify this is the assessment uh to assess the um Branch was property. Okay. Um, just level one, right? Level one, yeah, just level one assessment. We already approved this, so we're just looking to ratify it. Right. I think it was a unanimous vote. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can you obtain a motion? Sure, I'll move to uh, ratify the Brownfield Assessment Program grant. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Carries Municipal Planning Grant Award. Uh, I believe it was Monday or Friday, Monday of this week or Friday of last week, the town receiver noticed that it had received the Municipal Planning Grant that we had applied for to assess our child care needs in town. Uh, the amount requested it was uh, roughly about ten thousand dollars, including our ten percent match, or within the ten thousand dollar range, ten thousand and change. Uh, we received the grant. The town's match is nine hundred dollars. That would put us over a ten thousand dollar total grant. Uh, I would need to confirm, but I believe that we are able to use in-kind uh, match. So Josh's work, my work, uh, could also be a part of of our $900, which we would easily match for the grant. Um, and the grant would be used to hire um, a consultant to assess the buildings that would be available for use for childcare, including the Singer Building that is owned by the town, the Red Schoolhouse in Randolph Center, 
Um, and then potentially also work with VTC because I believe they also have um, a plan to work with the town to identify some locations for child care. Possibly the Enterprise Center. The Enterprise Center, exactly. Discussed. So. You said the Red School House and the Love Center. That's right. Is it, is it VTC's? Uh, yes, the on North Randolph Road, on South Randolph Road, and East Papa. Yeah, the old Randolph Center Elementary School. Yeah. VTC owns. Are they looking to get rid of that? Or well, they're willing to much? allow it to go for child care. Part of it or the whole thing? All of it. The whole thing. It fits all of the, the, from what we understand of what we learned in working with the group that has been reviewing the town's building. Uh, the Red Schoolhouse, not that that would be the final option, but the Red Schoolhouse meets all, checks all of the boxes, outdoor play space, it already has children play area uh, equipment uh, on the property, it has all the outdoor land and parking available, it has a separation of rooms for different different children, uh, different children ages, so uh, that building checks a lot of boxes. It won't necessarily, I'm not saying it's, it'll be the final choice, but uh, it's, it's good the VTC is offering it as an option. Yep. Interesting. It was good enough for kids for a lot of years. That's right. Worked for me. <laughs> that's what happened. That's what happened. Yeah, that's what happened. I got booted out of East Randolph. I had to go there. <laughs> now the truth comes out. And that's what happened, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Make it from East Randolph. <laughs> <laughs> He's only in second grade at that point. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Looking for emotion on this one. Him and Grammy were very good in trouble. <laughs> I move we accept the municipal planning grant for the child care. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Motion carries. Working Communities Grant. A resolution before us to sign to signify that we want to apply? Yes, that's correct. The board had previously uh, allowed or authorized the town to submit a letter of intent to apply for the grant. Uh, and now we're asking the board if, if it would like to pass this resolution so that we could then include it in the application packet so that we could apply for the grant itself. Uh, Josh has taken the lead on this particular grant. He's been leading not just the effort for the town, uh, but also coordinating all the other towns that are part of the group and scheduling the meetings. So um, Randolph is an integral part of this grant. If Randolph does not apply for this grant, the other towns on the list won't be able to apply for the grant. So so we, we are the, the glue for it. pressure. Well, we, needed the, we needed the numbers. Yeah. So yeah. there was a kind of a minimum, um, that's right. minimum population base that they look at for this. So it would be a good grant. Yeah, it would be a good grant. So yeah. I'll make a motion to. Uh, let's see here. You need a resolution? Is that what it is? Yeah, make a motion to uh, accept this. It's working communities challenge grant. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Motion carries old business appointment to the Economic Advisory Committee. Do we have an opening? Mm -hmm. We do. I'm sorry, I'm just uh, making sure I keep track of Perry made the first motion mm -hmm. and Pat, you made the second. Mm -hmm. And the result is 5 0. 4 0. 4 0. Four zero. Four zero. Sorry. We don't have math. That's right. Okay. I'm going to have to change all of these from five to four. <laughs> I'm going to tell Oops. Matt. You didn't notice he was gone. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, where are you? <laughs> Pretty quiet tonight. He went to the bathroom. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, I'll, I'll change them before we put them on the, on the website. Um, yes, we do have one opening. It is a one-year uh, appointment. Uh, Mary Richter has been very involved with the R3 process. She's also been attending, she's also attended Economic Development Committee meetings. She is recommended by the Economic Development Committee um, and is very interested in being a part of it. It's not included in your packets. 
What's included in your packet is Mary's statement to the board mm -hmm. uh, expressing your interest, but not included in your packet is a message that I received from Peter Reed, the committee chair, confirming that he supports and the committee supports Mary's appointment. Mm -hmm. Did somebody leave or just not? So we, well, no, we had someone leave. It was um, Roger Glovsky. He mm -hmm. departed yeah. uh, over a year ago, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. We'll make the motion that we appoint Mary Richter to the Economic Development Committee. A second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Carries. Other business? No other business. Manager's report. Very brief. I know I say that always. Um, you don't know that it's going to be brief. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, that was Perry, you made the, the motion for I did. And the second was Pat. Mm -hmm. Perry Shannon is, is out today. Um, her son has a presentation on LEAD, um, which I had no clue was what, what LEAD stands for, but it, she said she did. It's a, it's a drug education program, and then I said, oh, D.A.R.E. Uh, which then dated me because I remember it's being Dare from the 80s, and mm -hmm. she said, "Yeah, but they call it Lead now." And I said, "Oh, okay." Dare's out. Dare's out these days. Dare's out these days. Out the yeah, Dare's gone. Um, manager's report. Um, there, just a few things. The first is um, I have inquired just because of the ongoing conversation that the board is um, engaged with um, with Chandler. I have had conversations with. Um, a counterpart with the school district with Lane to ask if it would be possible for the town to host or to hold town meeting at Randolph Union High School at the auditorium. Uh, Lane has confirmed that absolutely the auditorium is available. Um, their stage would be equipped to host the, the play that's going on at that point, but uh, they have said that in front of the play area they could put a podium and chairs, and I, I confirm that it probably wouldn't be a problem if the board chose to have town meeting there. Um, so the date is available uh, February 29th, and I said to him that, you know, it's great that he's willing to reserve the room. We're not ready to commit to holding it there, but the option remains uh, available. Uh, we have two potential personnel changes coming up, or one for sure happening, well both are for sure happening. Our highway superintendent is leaving us uh, at the end of next week. Uh, I have had an interview with the highway superintendent of of a town in Addison County. Uh, the interview event uh, went very well. Um, he does strike me as somebody who is very interested in moving up in the field of highway uh, management. So I, I think it very, very well. So we wanted to share that with the board in case there were some uh, questions or potential issues that the board would like for me to raise before potentially offering a position. But um, this person seemed to uh, well equipped to handle the position, he's growing into the position. He's not as as aged as some of the members of our crew. Uh, not that that would uh, mean anything, but um, he has been progressively growing in the highway field and has training in law enforcement. So he's he's trained in how to defuse situations, which could be a a very important skill to have when we're working with the community and our union members. So. Um, The other person, position is the administrator position for the zoning department. Um, I asked Josh to take the lead on the hiring for that position. He's interviewed two candidates and he feels very strongly about being able to hire one of the two candidates. So it's now just a matter of speaking with that person, potentially making the offer, then being comfortable with what we're offering and potentially accepting the role. Great. Uh, which leads into the general permit process as we've, as we've been dealing with it. Uh, we did have a bit of a hiccup with our work uh, with the DRB committee, uh, some of the permits that had lagged for a considerable period of time. Uh, we now have a more working uh, style with the DRB. The DRB also agreed to have regular meetings on regular days similar to the board. All of the permits that had been backlogged that required DRB review and approval have all been cleared. Um, and we don't have any backlog on any permits at the moment uh, as Josh and I have been working on them. And Everything's been moving smoothly. Granted, it's the slow period for permits, but it's helping us to work on the varying different type of permits that are coming in. And so now he and I are 
well versed in the process, including the process with the DRB and with the PC as it works to change um, land use regulations and other ordinance issues. Uh, there are some uh, ordinance revisions that are in the works from our committee, uh, our committees. Uh, one of them is tax stabilization agreement, uh, not necessarily an, ordin uh, an ordinance, but uh, a process that is available to local businesses and residents. The Economic Development Committee is moving closer to having a draft to share with the board. Um, we're taking information from other towns, from other cities. The committee is really diving into making these changes, and we feel that we're going to have a, a, a a great tax stabilization agreement that's updated and includes all the most recent information. Uh, the Planning Commission is working on several different things, including potentially updating the, the town's sign, or, uh, sign ordinance. Uh, we've had conversations about issues that affect not just the sign ordinance for the town of Randolph, but just sign ordinances in general, as there have been some court cases that have had some dramatic effects to how municipalities manage signs. So we're working on those. And then also, we'll soon take up the issue of amending the land use regulations uh, for areas that are affected uh, through floodplain overlays to ensure that some of the residents that do live in some of those areas um, have the opportunity to invest in their properties in a way that would remain in compliance with federal uh, insurance policies and keep the town in compliance. So those are changes that are in the works and we feel we're going to make those changes. The PC has engaged with the state on that process, so any change that is made is essentially receiving the, the approval of the state at the same time. So. Uh, one last thing, we've received notice that Stagecoach is rebranding. They are working on a new um, logo, new colors, uh, and so they had previously asked us to potentially, well they didn't ask us, they sent us a notice if we wanted to attend was a part of a broad notice to attend one of the hearings. I shared that information with individuals from some of our committees that are more engaged and asked them to attend if they wanted to. So the process is going to be ongoing, but I think they're they're going to be changing their, their colors and their logo going forward. And that's it. That's all I have. Oh, yeah. And the PC was also going to send to the select board <coughs> some recommendations about the PUD situation. Oh, yes. Uh, the, the, the PC had previously taken action on uh, plant uh, unit developments. There was a, a hiccup with the, the administrative side of it, so on my portion of it, uh, in terms of being able to issue reports and notices to our neighboring towns and uh, to Rivers Otakuichi. So rather than bring the issue to the select board and potentially have the issue be not enforceable because of not following proper procedure, I asked the PC to start over again and we've set a new hearing date so that we can check all the boxes and, and bring it to the select board for proper action. Okay. Adolfo, what's happening with um, with the potential use of the the, um, the old iCare building by Mary Castle now? Um, with the, for child care, as the group, as the, has Damien and his group made progress on whether they're going to be able to make use of that facility or not? They, ha they have made progress. They have secured the services of a structural engineer who has agreed to come in. Um, that was part of a, uh, I think it was an offer by the school district to allow uh, a structural engineer. To, I think something was going on with the structural engineer in the school. It's a, the structural <laughs> engineer was um, I think it will do this work pro bono, so they're going to have a structure engineer come in and evaluate the building for their uses. Um, they are, that group, Damien and the child care group, are part of the municipal planning grant, so they are aware that the planning grant was applied for for purposes of reviewing that building and others as well. Uh, but uh, up until this point, there's been progress made, but only in that they were able to secure a structural engineer to come and do some of that work, and then also did a lot of work in the municipal planning grant application in the process. Uh, we have received more contact than usual from the person that was initially interested in purchasing that building before the town purchased it, so um, they've expressed interest in re-engaging in that potential transaction. It wouldn't necessarily be a direct buy sell, but it would be 
they're interested in acquiring the building in a, in a certain way. I have instructed that person that the select board took the building off the market for the six month period to allow the education group to do its work. Uh, they are not in a rush, but they are also um, willing just to continue to tell us that they're interested in the building. So when's, when's our six months up that we gave them? Uh, January. Okay. Uh, January. January was a, it was a deadline because uh, <laughs> the boards thought that if this has to go to the voters, the budget, uh, the warrant deadline is at the end of January. If we were going to work on the arrangement, right? Yeah. yeah. When will the planning grant conclude the use of that? <sighs> Much later than January, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not entirely sure of the deadline. So I'd have to go out to look for the, the consultant to do the work and I believe that those grants have a year, a year timeline to, to conclude. So, um, what is interesting is since we started this dialogue with childcare, it seems like there's more options that have floated onto the table here. Mm -hmm. And I know one of them is not if you're aware that Lane Millington was talking about changing structure of the grades in the school down there a little bit, yep. moving the, the six over to into the middle the, school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So to, to free up more space so that they could actually bring. Can do early that. education into the school so yeah. it's interesting that the conversation is now being looked at on different areas yeah seems like all positively yeah yeah and if there are other good options at play it would be really nice if yeah. there's somebody who really wants that building to yeah get it absolutely back into private hands and we're also working with several there's at least two structures right the enterprise center Right, and, and the Red School House. Red school school house. house. Yeah, I mean, and so they all have. And now there's a potentially increased capacity at the elementary school. And schools. the elementary school. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's not just. I think it's partly the. I'm, I wish I could remember now. I know they were they were talking about making space at RES, but it sounds like there there might be, with sixth graders moving out, space in the other elementary schools. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. that's kind of what I heard. No, that was the plan to do some shifting because there's empty rooms over here and this over here is full and so if he shifted some stuff yeah. oh, so. a little bit of change so but it sounded you know like it made sense it's positive, yeah. yeah it sounds yeah. like it makes sense and we have options and we also have been working with our uh, close contacts with the economic development portion of uh, state agencies in Montpelier they're also very interested in what we're doing because they also understand that economic development is closely tied into child care and family services and so they were aware that we were doing this and are now engaged and are becoming more engaged in the town taking the lead on child care evaluation so it's a lot of hap a lot happening good stuff, mm -hmm. good stuff. It's good to have people coming out of the table. Yeah, and it's, it's interesting. Like I've had more calls of people looking at places to live over the last two months. You know, I don't have any, I'm one, one apartment right now that's available, but I think in the last month, you know, I've had six or seven calls. People who are like coming to the area from some other place. You know, they're, and you know, because they've now got a job here. So it's, I think there's things that are percolating along there. I see LED had an advertisement today for five or six different positions. So, yeah, nice. It's moving forward. There's a lot of positive energy, mm -hmm. economic development wise, and just activities wise, community wise, community wise. Yeah. So, well, it's just a lot of people getting engaged in different areas. Mm -hmm. So, there's a little letter to the editor from Marjorie Graves today. Did you see that? She talked about that. You should read it. That's kind of interesting. It, yeah. yeah, it's in there. Marjorie wrote a little, you know, kind of a community thing. Mm -hmm. That was kind of a nice mm -hmm. letter. Is it an op-ed? No, it might have been. I don't so know. I, I just have to the letters to the editor when I didn't see it. So no, that's right. It might, it's right below them. It might okay. have been the op-ed. Yeah, I didn't look at that. Yeah. No, that's very positive. So. Anything more? That's it. If no. not, I have to pretend. You're going to feed them today? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Salut.